Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shaked. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. Because I'm the hurt child. Became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. All week, been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel light. Like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. All right. Any parts okay. you'd like to get to know better, change your relationship with? Um, so something that's coming up at this time is um, there's like a real heaviness um, sort of between like my heart and my solar plexus. Mm-hmm. Um, so it feel, just feels like a really heavy energy. And when I look at that and I, and I ask how I feel about it, um, I don't feel curious like I normally do. I feel um, just heavy. It just feels heavy and um, kind of solid. Hmm. Okay. Do you remember our last conversation? We spoke with a part that identified as heavy? Yes, I do. I kind of forget some parts of that part, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do you notice about this one, the way it shows up? It seems to not want anything around it or maybe anyone around it. Mm -hmm. Like it needs a lot of space. Okay. Well, maybe we can learn about it while still respecting that. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it, I feel like there might be something that it wants to say. Mm -hmm. Some message. Okay. Um, and I want you to know and this part to know that, as usual, nothing needs to be shared with me. So if some of that space is space for me and it has something it wants to just tell you, that's fine. Okay. How are you feeling towards it? More curious now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, just let it know. Okay. And ask what it wants you to know. There, there's really no words, but there, it feels like it's um, sort of, I want to say opening, like um, the heaviness has opened 
into something more vast, but it's lighter inside. Oh, I remember we had a heaviness the last time it had the baby with it. That's right. Inside, yeah. This one was shaped different, more like a rock, but it has the vastness inside of it with light. Yeah. And it's sort of saying there's a rose in the middle, roses in mm. the middle. I can't see the rose, but it's saying rose is in the middle. How does it feel about the amount of space that it has with you in this conversation? Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of talking about sunshine and roses. And is the sensation of heaviness, is that still there? Not really. Hmm. Would it be useful to figure out, to ask, learn more about what the heaviness was about? Just because okay, it was when there. You said that it was like the heaviness was on the outside and it showed me like the outside where the rock opened. Mm -hmm. So it showed me the rock opened and the heaviness was on the outside. Mm -hmm. What was it about? Yeah. Holding me down. It says holding mm -hmm. me down. And why is that important for it? What's it trying to accomplish? I'm not sure. Maybe to keep me from running around. Um, Does, does it in some way serve the roses and sunshine? Yes, that's what it was just, that's what was just coming to me is that uh, I got to, I got to keep the sunshine and roses um, because of that being around it, being around, it was around me and around the sunshine and the roses. And I guess it kind of kept other things out. So I feel like I was with the sunshine and the roses. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. It is amazing. And <laughs> it's, you know, what you're describing is, is, is new to me. I haven't encountered this before, but it also sounds a lot like every protector basically is they have this, this job, they have this, Often it feels heavy to them, and they're protecting something beautiful. So you could check that out with it, if that is part of its, how it feels its role is. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like that's um, absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like also that it wants to shed the rock. It wants to let that go. All of the heaviness yeah. that was the rock, it wants to let that go. Yeah, it's tired of tired mm. of having to do that. Yeah. Maybe you could ask what it's been trying to keep out, what it's afraid would happen if it did shed that.
It doesn't understand the question. It seems okay. to be then, then or now. Well, all right. I don't understand the, the response. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. So it has this heavy rock feeling and mm -hmm. it doesn't like doing that, it sounds like. And it wants to stop doing that. Why has it not felt able to? Oh. Uh, I feel like I feel like permission was missing. Mm -hmm. Need needed permission. And what um, would happen if it did it without permission? doesn't want to say. Okay. Show me butterflies. There's butterflies. How do you feel towards it as you notice just all the things it's showing you? I'm kind of amazed that it was there and I'm grateful. Um, yeah, I'm grateful and I, I want to play in the roses and the sunshine with the butterflies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, and it, it's like, good. Yeah. Do that. Good. And how does it notice you? What does it think about you? Oh. Um, I feel like part, part of the sunshine is coming from me, like, you know, lightness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I'm checking in to see how old I might it thinks I might be. Or great, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> We've been working together for a little while, huh? You're doing great. Um, hmm, interesting. Forty nine. Forty nine mm -hmm. is what I'm getting. Okay, so anything significant about that? Um, I was still married when I was 49, and that was, it was around the time I probably um, first thought about really seriously getting divorced. Hmm. Of course, it's taken a while. Yeah. So you maybe first thought about uh, shedding some of that heaviness. Mm. Yes. And then it probably had to come in and say, well, hold on. Had to do some type of job then. Some yes, I had to keep yeah. the sunshine and the roses, it said. I had to keep the sunshine and the roses. I had to do that. Hmm. But I feel like there's an understanding that they, that it can't stay inside. It needs to come out. Mm -hmm. And that the heaviness needs to go away. Okay. What would the heavy part rather be doing with its energy if it didn't Ooh, do that role? Oh, let's let's see.
I don't, I don't really know. It's looking around. I feel, I feel like um, searching. Searching for somewhere else to be. Okay. Did you update it with your real age? I did. And it was like, wow. Wow, 62? Yeah. And does it trust you to help it out and to help out any other parts? It said, well, this is yours. This is yours. (laughs) I was just here. You could ask it what that means. It's like, take the sunshine and the roses, the things that make you feel good, and go and play with them. Go and do something with them. Yeah. And how do you feel about that? You up for that? Yeah, it feels like it wants me to share them with other people. It wants me to share the sunshine and roses. Mm-hmm. Not to keep it, not to keep it inside anymore. Mm-hmm. So it wants me to let it go. It wants me to let the heaviness and the rock go and take the sunshine and roses with me. Mm-hmm. And there'll be butterflies, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, it means something, I'm sure. Yeah, it feels like a lot of fun. Hmm. And it feels like light and um, has really good energy to it. Does it seem like the roses, mm, all of that goodness, does, does that have an age? Is that associated with a any age um so i'm searching and 12 keeps sticking okay and i tried to search past 12 or around 12 and see if like but 12 is the number that stuck Mm mm-hmm I don't know what the relevance is to. Do either of these parts have any memories they want to show you any, anything about being 12 that might have some of these same feelings? Lightness and heaviness. Well, um, when you asked about that, when you asked about the heaviness part, there was another heaviness that kind of came up in my chest, Mm -hmm. the lower part of my throat, part of my chest. It's maybe more dense than it is heavy. Mm-hmm. And it contains the secret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, how do you feel about getting to know that part? I don't want to. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's listen to that. Okay. What's the concern? Uh, just bringing up stuff I don't need. I don't need that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So is there a concern that by bringing this up, it'll kind of, the denseness will kind of stick to you and won't be helpful or will overwhelm you or hold you back from enjoying the light? Yes. When you said that, all the, um, you said about stickiness, like it it was like a whole bunch of different pieces and they were all stuck to me. And it's like hard to get them off. So I didn't, I don't want to open it because I don't want to get all that icky stickiness. Right. Stuck on me. Yeah. Well, this all makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. So I can, if if you'd like, I can kind of explain what I, where I'm at, what I'm thinking that mm-hmm. we're encountering here. And if, okay. if not, I mean, you, it sounds like you're intuiting and going with what comes up just fine. So it's up to you if you want to, if you want me to kind of. Yes, I would like you to. Please. Okay. So heaviness sounds like a protector to me. What heaviness is protecting and it's saying, this is yours. Heaviness is recognized that it's not the rightful guardian, the ultimate guardian of what it's protecting, which is an exile. Exile perhaps is the roses. And I imagine, because just from where we've come to here, that the exile, the 12-year-old, I assume, also has some burdens, some some denseness, some things that it, she had experienced that maybe this heaviness came in to, again to protect. And, and now you have other parts or some parts saying, oh, we just want the fun stuff if we're, if we, if, if going to this 12 year old or going to this next part includes this, this dense feeling, that's no good. We don't want that, mm-hmm. which, which is normal. That's normal for protectors to, they don't want to deal with it. Um, so d- does any of that kind of sound yeah. like it might correlate? It does. What happens when what happens when you do deal with it? What what is dealing with it? Well, it's because all of the to, parts feel like they're running around and they're like they don't know what's going to happen. Right, right. Yeah, so it's similar to any of the work you've done with parts, which is you start by having no idea what, what's about to happen and, and some trepid <laughs> and some trepidation, right? And then as you meet them, you learn what, who they really are and what they really need from you. And if you're able to stay in self energy, which I think you're great at, then you will be able to help them through understanding and help them unburden and not feel like they have to play part play roles that they don't want or carry burdens that they don't want and also they can't really hurt you that's the parts running around scared they they usually think that you're younger or that yeah they're usually stuck back in a certain time they don't understand self energy and how it works and um but if there's a 13 year old in there with a heavy heart, yes, there might be some tears involved, but you from self energy, um, won't be damaged by her. Okay. So this is kind of like, um, getting to meet the exile. I think so. Because we we haven't done anything like that yet. I think but we have. Actually, I'm really curious about that. Okay. Oh, I we kind of did, that. didn't we? Mm-hmm. 
yeah, I think you had a, it was a girl easy. with a toolbox. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was easy. Well, it's easy in hindsight. Yeah. I mean, it's, but it, at the time it's, it's kind of scary and heavy and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, yes, uh, they want me to meet the exile. Meet the exile is okay. Yeah. But thank you for the explanation. That's that's really appreciated. Great. And yeah. they feel like they can breathe more now. There's kind Great. of some anticipation. Great. And if it does at any point feel too intense or too unpleasant, you can always step back out. Uh, the protective parts can jump back in. It's, okay. You have you have that power and control. Okay. Okay. And I feel like we have permission to um, to talk to the exile. Great. I feel like that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, what do you notice about this exile? Is this a 12-year-old? Is this the part that's dense, that has the dense feelings? And or the roses, what are you noticing? Um, yeah, she's she is dense, and she's um, like kind of curled up. Mm-hmm. She's not really talking or um, not not too observant around her. Yeah. Okay. You could let her know that she doesn't have to talk. She doesn't have to do anything. Okay. And maybe just introduce yourself. Let her know you'd like to get to know her. Okay. I need to find where I need to be um, in her space. Um, it's off a ways. I'm backing out a little. She doesn't really seem to care about me. Okay. That's good to know. I'm not going to talk be... to her right now. Okay. I'm just going to sit with her. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally fine that she, again, doesn't care, doesn't want to talk. Yeah, it's better if I just sit with her and breathe. Great. Great. She's starting to get a little curious about why I'm here. feel like it's taking longer than I would like. She kind of turned, scooted around so her back's feet. I wonder how long she's been in that state. Yeah, 12 keeps coming up, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't get any other information. Okay. Any part of you that's in a hurry, maybe just let it know. She's been here for a while, and you've been here with her for about three minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> that was helpful. Yeah.
I'm just going to bring the others over a little closer to me. Okay. The ones that we met before. Okay. She doesn't seem to mind that. I, that would. But she's not I interacting. Would, yeah. Well, I would check that out with her. Um, you okay. know, the first part okay. said it wanted space and. Yeah. <laughs> Typic, typically, typically, the reason these parts are exiled is because of the protectors. So that's why uh -huh. we do what we okay. do to to ask them to stand down for a little while, so that so that self can be there with the with the part with the exile. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fine if they watch, and really, whatever you and your parts want to negotiate is fine. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that they have to be there by any means. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to ask them to go back. Yeah. You could try asking this 12 year old. Is she 12? I think so. Okay. You could ask her what it's been like for her being in this place with this dense feeling. It's lonely. It's lonely and she's tired. How are you feeling towards her? Well, um, I don't know. She's kind of physically hurt, like sore. She's physically sore from being kept like that. She feels twisted inside and not. Um, yeah, she just feels twisted. Would it be okay with you if she showed you more about about all of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let her know that. Tell her you really want to understand what it's been like. And she can show you however she wants. What she wants is to stretch out and... to get the kinks out. That's what she wants. Okay. Yeah, there's there's a couple of knots. Yeah, there's a couple mm -hmm. of knots. Yeah. Those knots have like little babies in them, like little eggs in them or something. Mm. They're like little pods or something. Does she, she stretches, how, they kind of yeah. pop. Okay. <laughs> Does she know who, how she came to be in this place, twisted up? I think so, but she's not okay. saying. Okay. She doesn't know me. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's the, that's the stage that you're in with her, which is fine. And the, the better she knows you and the better you know her, the more you'll be able to help her out. Okay. So. So it's important not to skip past that getting to know stage. 
Okay. When you did introduce yourself, how was that? Did you make the connection of how mm -hmm. you're how you're related? Did you? She didn't. Uh, she didn't really acknowledge me. Okay. Yeah. But she. I think she may now if I talk a little bit more about. Yeah. Because she's shown me. She's shown me about the stretching and about the knots and, and the little pods that are popping. Okay. Yeah, whatever she wants to show you. She she really wants me to keep my distance because she doesn't know me. She doesn't seem to want an explanation. <laughs> oh, she doesn't want to hear, so, hear what you have to say about who you are? Not really. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's kind of, it feels like, you know how people can say anything they want, but it doesn't make it true. <laughs> it kind of feels like that. Like she just doesn't care about who I say I am. Right. That's fine. She mentioned feeling really lonely. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the only message, the implied message is that she's not alone. Okay. Whoever you are, you're the one who's here with her and mm -hmm. able to see her and listen to her. Yeah, that feels really good. That's that's more important to her than who I say I am. Right. How's it going? Is there more she's showing you? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel for things. I I feel like I can't. Um, she feels pushed if I mm -hmm. do too much. So I'm just kind of looking around mm -hmm. um, at the landscape of things. And, uh, you know, there's an openness that wasn't there before. Um, the heavy rock is sort of flattened out. Her physical discomfort seems to have become less. And she's feeling a little more engaged with what is around her. Great. She does know I'm here, but she doesn't care who I say I am. That could be something else you offer her is she'd like a change of scenery or landscape? No. Okay. She doesn't want to leave there. The light is still there. I don't know where, where the roses are. She might be the rose, like you said before. And you mentioned um, yourself 
being the light. Oh, yes. Yeah, that feels right, too. Like there's some connection between myself and the light and her wanting to stay there. Yep, just let her know she can do whatever she likes. Yeah, she likes that. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's another part inside. Inside her? Inside of her. Could she be a protector? Yes. She could be protecting other parts, and you could ask her mm -hmm. that. She is. Mm hmm She said there's a little baby. Yeah. I wonder if that's, that's one of the reasons. That's why she has to stay here, she said. I was just going to say. That's why she can't leave. <laughs> that's what she said. I have that's to right. stay here. That's right. She's kind of showing it to me a little bit. But it's not heavy. It's... Uh, It's lovely. It's a beautiful energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's been protecting it. Yeah. She's been saving it. Uh -huh. She's kind of showing me like the baby's beautiful little energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She saved it. Yeah. She had to give up a That's lot so to do nice. that. Yeah, she did. She wanted to be 12, but she couldn't. Hmm. Does that make sense to you? No. <laughs> what would it mean for her to be 12? Well, I feel like she's running around and just like doing things that 12 year olds do. Right. And which she couldn't do if she's got this baby to protect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something else you can offer her. As she I gets offer? to know you, as she gets to know you, mm -hmm. that. You're great with babies. Oh, yes. I love that. And that you do. And she can be a 12-year-old if, among other things, someone else can look after this baby. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. She's not really necessarily open to that at this time. Mm-hmm. She said it's not about her. It's not about her. I mean, it doesn't matter that she that she gets what she wants. Mm-mm. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's been how she's been operating all this time. Mm-hmm. Her wants haven't mattered. She stays twisted up and alone. She doesn't see any reason to let the baby go because she doesn't need she doesn't need those. So I asked her what the baby needs. Hmm. I'm not really getting anything on that. Okay. She's just holding on to it. That's fine. Maybe even a little tighter. That's fine. Maybe you could explore with her, share with her all of those things that it would be nice to do as just a 12 year old, you know, just a 12 year old who's not in charge of a baby. I mean, Mm -hmm. so I'm asking her if she wants to see those things. Yeah. No, she said, but she wants to see what other people do, but she doesn't, she doesn't want to see what she could be doing. She just wants, she'll she'll look to see what other people do. Okay. Do you want to show her that? She doesn't want me to show her what she could do. Okay. Um, Yeah. Keep it hypothetical. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll look at that. So. Okay. Hmm. What do 12 year old girls do? (laughs) They sit around and chit chat. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. What else? She's watching them. She's very curious about that because what I was they talk never about chit chatty. I was never a chit chatty twelve year old. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't. She was never a chit chatty twelve year old. <laughs> She's kind of laughing about that. What else do they do? She's kind of listening to them talk about boys. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It's kind of fun, right? Yeah. Watching them ride bikes, which Mm -hmm. I did do a lot of. Mm. She's watching some of the things that I did do, like I, I rode horses and I rode bikes and I walked a lot and played with my neighbors. She's kind of watching those things like, you know, that's fun. She likes that. All the really girly stuff seems foreign to her. How does she feel about that? Wearing pink and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, She doesn't feel like she needs that. Mm-hmm. She said the same thing about just being 12. Mm-hmm. So just curious what else comes up around that. What would it be like to do those things? Wear pink, she be chatty, talk fearful. about boys. Yeah, she kind of seems yeah. fearful about that. She has some fear around that. Mm-hmm. 
Is she willing to show you what that fear is about? Um. Something happened, something that made her pick up that belief or that fear. Yeah, she's kind of blocking that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need to be shared with me. Okay. So I feel like she's wiping her hands of that. Um, I'm asking why, why are you you willing to do that? Why are you willing to do that now? So it feels contradictory. It feels like she's willing to not um, not hold on to the fear or what caused the fear, um, but she's not really willing to give me the baby either. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know what I don't know either, but I think these are really valuable things to keep exploring. Mm -hmm. I assume, I imagine there's a lot more to get to know around that fear, even if she says she's done with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm curious, but uh, yeah, it it came from somewhere and it has some meaning to her. And And maybe a message to send her is just that we're not asking her to be different or to, oh, oh, this fear is irrational, so stop believing it. We're not, Mm -hmm. that the goal is really to understand what it's been like for her. Oh, okay. And the same with the baby. The goal isn't, give me that baby. I'm a I'm a better mother. It's right. tell me about tell me about this. She doesn't seem to have a lot of, I don't know, I'm going to say trust. That's fine. Kind of. She's shown you a lot. Yeah, sometimes when I say things, she's like, hmm, doesn't matter what you say. She did say while you were talking, like she kind of indicated that, um, yeah, well, I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not going to give up the, like, I'm not, I wasn't going to give up the beautiful baby. Yeah. Like, that was really important to her. Not to lose that. I have the totally. Beauty of that little one. I totally respect that. She loves the beauty of the baby. You love the beauty of the baby. I love the beauty mm-hmm. of babies. <laughs> we don't want to give that up. No. Yeah. I think the offer is, again, and it's 
And it's an offer that, that comes through building a relationship that might take many conversations is to offer to help her and to allow her to be what she wants to be and to have and express the beauty in her and to know that she's not alone, to have support, to have a choice. Maybe she likes to be with the baby on Monday, but not on Tuesday. And just to offer all of those things, to understand her better, to understand her fears. Okay. Those feelings of twisted up and dense, to really understand them so that you can help her unburden them if that's what she wants. Yeah, she's kind of like, um, she doesn't need anything. So okay. unburdening, well, this is a sacrifice that she is willing to accept. And so un yeah. unburdening doesn't seem to um, please her. Okay, I respect that. She's she's accepted that sacrifice for this many years. Mm -hmm. I know that she's capable of continuing to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. There's probably plenty of other parts that would be just fine with that. Yes, I'm sure. Status, status quo, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And how do you feel about it? Um, I feel a lot more curious than when we started the conversation because I didn't have a lot of curiosity towards what was going on today. Just. Um, but I feel a lot more curious about it now. Um, and I, I do want to, I feel like I want to spend some time just sitting with her. Great. Um, yeah. That's it. That's all you need. In the, in the horse curiosity. world, we call it undemanding. Yeah, in the horse world, we call it undemanding time. You know? Love it. Undemanding time. Undemanding time. You know, there's a lot of right. times where they do nothing with each other. They just stand under a tree and swat flies. You know? Yeah, I imagine it's and, really hard to convince them mm -hmm. to convince them of of your of any agenda, <laughs> right? Right. We can, then we go out there and we show up at the board and we're like, and we're going to ride circles and uh -huh. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the instructor in the way that I was taught and studied um, was to understand the value of undemanding time, and I feel like that's what she needs. I think you're right. Check it out with her. Let her know that you're you're willing to keep doing that. She said I, I can, can stay, but she's not real welcoming about it. <laughs> well, maybe there's, yeah. you know, is there a way that she would like you to to do it differently next time? Does she want to meet somewhere else? Does she does she want you to not show up with me around? Does she want you to bring chocolate? <laughs> um. The meeting somewhere else seemed to seem to strike a chord. She can bring the baby, or not. Yeah, she she will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like she doesn't leave the baby. Okay. So you want to brainstorm that with her? Just kind of yes, a, I where do. Would, where would a next meeting be? Um, she feels like she doesn't know a lot about places to go, but she's kind of like looking and she's like over, over there, which is kind of like over by a rock. Hope it's not, hope it's not another rock <laughs> like the one we started with. Um, yeah, she's kind of like over Um, it, it's, it's within sight. I can see it. I can see okay. what she wants. You can offer to furnish it in whatever way or bring along a play pen. Okay. 
that could be another thing you offer. Is there anything? Is there anything she oh. she would like in the meantime to help out with her baby care? Okay. Yeah, the playpen was when you said that she was kind of like a playpen, and she seemed to be exploring other places to go because she showed me like a sidewalk, like um, like a cafe on the sidewalk. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With and then you said playpen, and she was like play. Yeah. yeah. You can make it all make it all easier for her, more comfortable. Okay. Yeah, she likes that. That's all good stuff. It seems to be like really good stuff. Um, Sounds as opposed like really to good me stuff. just telling her, yeah. Um, as opposed to me telling her who I was or whatever. She's just like, yeah, this is this is all good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this is you showing her who you are. And getting to know her, yeah, of course. She- She's definitely willing to uh, to look and see who I am, as opposed to in the beginning when she wasn't really looking around or engaged with what was around her. So mm-hmm. she's very engaged now with you know with that and a little bit more with watching me and what what else do I have to offer? She's kind of thinking like, what else do I know? What else do I know about? So I told her I know James and she's like, good. Okay, James. <laughs> yeah. You seem to be on thinking, the good list. <laughs> all right. I was just thinking about how many other parts, you know. Oh yeah. It's in your first time doing this. Right. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want them over here. She wants her space. No, no. No, yeah. And because uh, something you can help with is creating that space. It's one of your yeah. one of your superpowers. Okay. Yeah, that opened up a lot. Mm-hmm. That was that was a good trust building thing. She likes that I have the superpower to give her space. That's awesome. Right. Yep. And that's through your other work with parts, really. You got space from the other protectors to to get to her in the first place. All the parts that were scared about going there or just any any of them, all of the work you've done. She seems to be watching that like on a screen. Mm -hmm. So that gives her the space. She was, she took what you were saying and put it up on the screen and that allowed her to have space without letting that in. Right. So it wasn't intrusive. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's kind of asking if I can use the screen to show her things when we talk. So, of course, I said yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can show her things through that channel. And she can do the same. She, you know, if there's stuff that she wants to oh, show, okay. show you via something else. Um a lot of parts just like to draw or, you know. Okay. Okay. So you'll be revisiting with this part? Yeah, that would be great. I think we should definitely okay. do that. Uh, well, I'm going to do that, yes, before I great. talk to you again as well. Uh, okay. And I do have an appointment already set with you. Good to I know. I think for a week or two from now. Okay. Well, if it feels like it 
something you want to move to try to make it closer, that's fine. I mean, it sounds like you really are doing great with this part. So yeah, stay in touch with her. Okay. Feel, uh, yeah, I definitely to, will. Feel free to text. I feel like we're anything. in a good place now. <laughs> sounds like it. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, well, thank you. Very appreciative of that. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a very interesting session today. Definitely. And very, very interesting to get to know her. Yeah, yeah. So thank you and thanks to her. For <laughs> yeah, showing up thank and, you, James. Absolutely. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, All right, well, well enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. I'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Do you want to help bring more self-energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Yvonne, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube, and they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.